everyone, it's Susan Riley from Education Closet On Demand. I'm your host and an arts integration specialist, as well as the founder of educationcloset.com. And today, I want to ask you a really quick question. See if this sounds familiar to you. Um, you're sitting at home or at, over summer break, or you're at work over summer break, and you get an email from your school that is saying, that come this fall, you're gonna be starting a new initiative. Maybe it's arts integration, maybe it's STEAM, maybe it's project-based learning or process-based learning, or you're becoming an IB school or a PYP school or an MYP school, whatever the case may be. And uh, it is now going to be up to you to be incorporating some of these techniques into your classroom. Maybe they're going to start with a pilot or maybe they're going to be asking everybody to start with one or two lessons or in the worst case scenario they're going to ask you to jump in with both feet and just kind of work at it as you go. But don't worry you're going to be getting some training when you return in August. Does that make you just kind of want to run away, <laughs> hide under your covers? <laughs> If you've been in education long enough, I guarantee you that you have had this exact same scenario happen to you. I know that I had it happen to me more times than I could count as a classroom educator. So <laughs> what happens when that happens? What do you do? Do you go out and spend your own summer vacation getting professional development that may or may not work? Do you spend a lot of time and money stressing on something when you're not sure if it's the way that your school is gonna implement it? There's a lot of questions there. And here's what I would suggest. First of all, don't panic. Slow down. Our minds will run a mile a minute trying to figure out how we fit into that scenario. And that's not our job right now. That email, that phone call, that's a heads up to you. That's a Spend some time planning, maybe doing a little bit of research. Get to know the idea and get to know where you fit into that idea. Um, the second thing that I would encourage you to do is go and ask your administrators. Look at this wind. This is great. <laughs> I got to say, it feels really good. Um, go and ask your administrators. Be proactive and say, could you give me some information, something to read, something that I could figure out what model you're going to be using so that I can make some adjustments myself, little tweaks here and there. The more proactive you are, the better it's going to be. Now that's not to say you have to redo your entire curriculum this summer. What it is, is that you need to be able to jump ahead and say, what are the books that they're reading to make this call so that I know what uh, kind of implementation they're looking at? Because here's why that's important. If you're becoming a STEAM school, here's some insight into that. There are hundreds of brands of STEAM. STEAM can have a lot of different meanings right now because there's a lot of different interpretations as to what that art component really looks like when it's integrated with STEM. In fact, some places don't even integrate STEM well, so to try and integrate the two of them together, it's a little challenging. So before you jump in with both feet to integrate with STEAM, figure out what's their definition of STEAM. What are they looking for so that you've got an idea of where to go down the line. The same is true for project-based learning. Are they really looking for project-based learning or are they looking for process-based learning? Again, the acronyms are all over the place right now. So being able to read what they're reading and having a good idea ahead of time is always going to set you up for success. Third, I want you to think about streamlining, especially if this is the first year that you're trying it or the first year that, it's, that you're being asked to become a part of this pilot or the larger initiative. Think about streamlining as much as possible. Don't think about mastering it the first year. Think about what are the key components that I need to have in place for this to be successful for my students within my curricular model, okay? You need to have a game plan, something that is small steps that you can put into place, what's called the minimum viable product. Now, that's not to say that it is the least common denominator. There's a difference. The minimum viable product that I'm talking about is what 
how do you streamline this so that it's not completely overwhelming, that you can get a little bit of test data to figure out what works and what doesn't work, so that later on you can take what you've learned and then modify your curriculum. Okay, that's the important part. So you need to look for something that is going to streamline that process for you, get you a minimum viable product that you can learn from this first year, and then move forward with a bigger implementation the following year. So when you get that email or that phone call, do not panic. This is the time of year when schools really reevaluate where they are, they take a look at test data and kind of think about where do they want to try next. Think of this as an experimental process and that you're going to be a leader in that process so that you can kind of take control of your own destiny a bit. Now, I am so excited to announce that at Ed Closet, we have been hard at work behind the scenes to develop something to help you with this, especially this time of year. We've created the Creative Mindset Blueprint, which is exactly what I just described in terms of a streamlining process. If your school is looking at integrating the arts in any capacity, whether it be arts integration, STEAM, project-based learning in the arts, any type of integration of the arts, you're going to want to check out this new class. Because there's a couple of things that are different about this class compared to our traditional graduate level courses. This class does not come with graduate level credit. However, it is self-paced, so you can go at your own pace, own time, whenever you want to log in. You have access to it for life. So you can download the videos, you can download all the cheat sheets, you can download all the worksheets that come with it. Everything is there for you to download. And if you follow the link that we're going to provide you in this post today, shh, I can't tell you what it is on the video, you have to go to the post. If you follow that link, you will get 50% off of the course to download it. So it's a downloadable course, you can take it with you wherever you go, and when you walk out, you walk out at the end of that course with a streamlined process for starting an arts integration initiative. Okay, so we talk about buy-in, we talk about what the creative mindset is, we talk about strategies that will guarantee you success every single time, and we talk about assessment and celebration. So you get all of that in this one course and you get it 50% off if you follow that link in the post today. So I encourage you to go take a look at that. It is going to empower you when you get that phone call this summer, I guarantee it. If you have any questions, please send them down to our comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And I can't wait to share with you one more surprise next week. So be sure to tune in to next Tuesday's Ed Closet On Demand.